Good morning, church. Today's reading is Psalms 19, 7, 14. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are than gold, even much than fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and drip, drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, them is your servant warned. In keeping them, there is great reward. But who can detect their errors? Clear me from hidden faults. Keep back your servant also from the insolent. Do not let them have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my, my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you. O oh Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Word of God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Ne- the next reading is John 20, 11, 18. Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been laying one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she, when she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? supposing him to be the gardener. She said to him, Sir, if you had carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, in Hebrew, Rubuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father, and your Father, to my God, and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and she told that he had said these things to her. Word of God, thanks be to God. Well, my friends, this has been an amazing amazing day. I cannot wait to tell you about it. Oh my goodness. I know that many of you know my friend Jesus, and you probably know what happened to him this week. It has been awful. Just awful. You see, they crucified my friend Jesus, the the teacher, the wonderful person who who just has meant so much to me. And then this morning, this morning was amazing. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me introduce myself. I am Mary. I'm from the town of Magdala. And I'm sure that you have heard about me, and maybe you've heard things that aren't necessarily true. So let me tell you, that I am not a woman of ill repute. I am not a woman who was caught in adultery that Jesus saved from being stoned to death. I am, however, a woman who had seven demons cast out of her by the teacher, by Jesus. You know, before Jesus came into my town, I was broken. I was lost. I was completely isolated. I was eaten up inside by by these demons that were in me. 
everything was dark. Nothing made sense. Nothing was, was, I had no ability to make sense of anything or put anything together. Everything was fragmented. Sometimes I could understand and sometimes I couldn't. Sometimes I could speak and sometimes I couldn't. Everything in me didn't seem like it fit together at all. And then, that day, Jesus came into our town. And for the first time, it seemed like somebody looked at me and actually saw me. You see, there were plenty of people who, who knew I was there, who saw who I was, who, who knew about me, and very carefully they looked the other way. They didn't want to see me. They didn't want to know me. My goodness, I didn't even know myself, to be honest. And yet that day, all of a sudden he looked at me and I felt a war beginning within me. I felt rage. I felt struggle. And it overwhelmed me, and I fell to the ground, and I crumpled into a ball. And the next thing I knew, I woke up. They say that seven demons had been cast out of me, that Jesus just called them out, and they fled. They say that I was not awake for any of it, which I believe because I don't remember it. They say it was an amazing act of kindness and compassion by the teacher. They say they'd never seen anything like it before. And when I woke up, I felt completely different. I felt free of the darkness. I felt full of light and, for the first time, full of hope. I felt like all of the different pieces of myself were put back together and that I was made whole and I was finally completely free of all of the things that weighed so heavy on me and in me. And for the first time, I felt joy. And then I thought, how, how do I do this? What do I do next? Because I knew that there were so many other people in the world who were hurting. Maybe not as I was. But there were people who were hurting, who felt hopeless, who felt alone, who felt isolated, who felt darkness all of the time. And I thought, I want to help them. I know Jesus is going out to help them. I want to help too. Because no one should have to feel like this. And so that's what I did. I, I didn't have much to give up, but I did. I walked away with Jesus and his disciples, and I started to follow him, to learn from him, to be like him. It was a gift for me to be able to give back in thanksgiving for what he had done for me. It's so interesting because I was not the only one that felt this way. There were other women too, and we decided together that we were going to serve him. That we were going to make sure that the disciples were eating properly. That we were going to make sure that they, they had a place to sleep. That we were going to make sure that they took a bath because men are stinky. And so that's what we did. We served them. We helped them. We encouraged them. We did everything we possibly could to support them and help them to do their work in the world. And I have to tell you, my friends, it was amazing to be with Jesus. It was amazing to be following him and listening to him and witnessing all that he was doing for people. The healing, the teaching, 
the preaching, the miracles, the, the miraculous new hope and life and mercy he was bringing to the world. I saw all of it. I saw it all. Up close, right there. It was, it was interesting to me because, because when he came, he had a gift. His job, what he wanted to teach the people was about God's love and God's mercy. He wanted to teach them that they didn't have to be kept far apart from God all of the time. That God wanted the people to be close. That God wanted the people to not be in brokenness and sin and shame forever. He taught the people that we need to love God and then that we need to love each other. He taught the people that we need to look at each other exactly how God looks at us, not as we might look at each other and see all of our differences. He wanted us to see each other how God saw each other how Jesus saw us. I have to tell you, that time changed my life, and, and I was all in. And so as he headed off to, to Jerusalem, we started to hear word that people were not happy with the way he was teaching and the things he was saying. We started to hear that, that people were not happy because Jesus was telling them to, to go about loving each other. And sometimes loving each other meant not exactly following all of the laws that the people of power had set up. And the people in power were struggling. They were trying to hang on to their control, and Jesus was threatening it all the time. It's about love, Jesus said. It's not about regulations and rules. It's about love. As we went into Jerusalem, Jesus went to the temple and he was irate at what the money changers were doing. They were taking people's money and telling them that it was only if they did this or that that God would care about them. And that's not how it is. And so Jesus went in and he overturned the tables and the money went flying and the people got so angry at him. And from then on, everything was set in motion. They paid one of Jesus' friends, one of my friends, Judas, to betray Jesus. They had a farce of a trial as they, after they arrested him and they hung him on the cross. And some of us stood and watched at the foot of the cross and we watched him die. It was horrific. It was the darkest day of my life. It was so terrible they wouldn't even let us anoint his body and prepare it for a proper burial. The Sabbath was coming. They had to take the body down and put it in a tomb. But this morning, when the Sabbath was over, I went to the tomb. And I had my ointments, and I was ready to anoint him and give him the honor that he was due. And when I got to the tomb, it was empty. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to make sense of this. I didn't know what had happened, and I was terrified. And then I thought, maybe it's my madness. Maybe it's coming back. And so I ran. I ran to Peter, and I ran to John, and they, I dragged them to the tomb, and we ran together, and the tomb, again, was still empty. Peter and John, they weren't sure what was happening either, but they knew that if the soldiers came back and saw them standing there, that very well they could be arrested because people would think they had taken the body. So they left. And I didn't know what to do. And I lost it. All of the despair of the previous days, all of the questions, all of the anguish, all of the emotions that I felt, all of the uncertainty just came pouring out of me as I cried and wept in that garden. 
And then angels appeared. And they said, why are you weeping? He's not here. And I couldn't understand. Then I turned and I saw a gardener. He was, he was this man. He was in blazing white robes. And, and, and I didn't know who it was. And yes, my eyes were blurry. I was teary. And I just, I couldn't make sense of who this person was. And then he called my name, Mary. And I knew who it was. It was Jesus. He was there. He was alive. He was right there in front of me. And I was so excited. All I could do was hold on to him with all of my might. But as I did that, he said, no, you have to let go. Because Mary, I have things for you to do. We can't stay in this moment. We must move forward. We must move on. I need you to go and tell my friends that I am alive. I'm still trying to make sense of it all. But I know that as I, I went to get Peter and John and I announced to them the truth, I have seen the Lord with my own eyes. I've seen him. I've seen the teacher. I was so excited. And I was afraid for a moment that they weren't going to believe me, but then I realized I didn't care because I was speaking my truth. I have seen him. I have seen him teach. I have seen him be compassionate. I have seen him bring healing. I have seen him bring forgiveness. I have seen him bring hope. I have seen him bring life. I have seen him. As I announced it to them, I realized that, yes, the Lord had given me this task. But this was not the end. Because I know there are people out there who live in darkness and doubt and fear and shame and hopelessness. And I must tell them, too, that I have seen the Lord. Amen.